Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to graph y equals secant of pi x. And to do that, we obviously want to graph the uh, reciprocal function, which is, I'll use another one, uh, the cosine. So I really want to graph y equals cosine of pi x. And again, we use this to kind of identify the shapes of the graph so that, therefore, we can then um, actually graph the secant graph. So, when we're graphing the cosine graph, um, remember the main important thing for actually graphing anything is we want to be able to understand what is our a, b, a, b, c, and d. Well, to look at that, we need to look at our transformation form. And this can be for any trigonometric function, but since we're graphing cosine, I'll do use it for cosine. a times cosine of bx minus c plus d. All right. And what we notice is. From here, from our parent graph, which is just y equals cosine of x, the only change that I have is I have pi multiplied by x. So I don't have an a, I don't have a c, and I don't have a d. Well, remember, a is going to tell us the amplitude of cosine, how high and down low our max and our mins are going to be for the graph. Um, our c is going to help us determine our shifting left or right. And our d is going to help us determine our shift up or down. Now, b is going to represent our um, period. It's going to affect our period. So let's go through all the information. So we need to determine our amplitude, our period, our x scale, our phase shift, and our vertical transformation. I'm just going to go through everything because it's very, very important for you to be able to kind of whip these out. So the amplitude is the absolute value of a, which in this case is just 1. Our period is 2 pi divided by b, which in this case, 2 pi divided by pi, which is just equal to 2. That means the distance that it's going to take the graph to repeat itself is not 2 pi anymore. It's now 2. Therefore, my x scale is just period divided by 4, which in this case is 2 divided by 4, which equals 1 half. To determine our phase shift, that's going to determine you know, from my initial period. My initial period for sine and cosine you know, usually starts at 0, ends at 2 pi um, when the period, right? But the phase shift is going to tell you, all right, are you going to be shifting that at all? And so to determine that, all you do is take what is inside your parentheses of your function and set it equal to 0, and then solve for uh, x. Well, x equals 0, and so therefore I'm going to be shifting at 0 units. So you're pretty much going to start again back at 0. Vertical transformation is going to be d, which in this case we do not have a d. We're not adding or subtracting anything to our function, so therefore it's going to be none. All right. so. Basically, ladies and gentlemen, we, we want to graph this. Um, let's see, two periods to the right, two periods to the left. Let's do two periods to the right. OK, when you're getting the graph, what I always like to do is start at your phase shift. Where are you going to start, right? Where is, is the shape, phase shift shift to left or right, or is it at 0? Since I'm starting at 0, I'm going to go, OK, that's where I'm going to start at. I'm going to start at when x is equal to 0, right? Right here. And we're not going to do any negatives in this case. Then I look at the amplitude. The amplitude is, remember, is the half distance from the maximum to the minimum of the graph. So in this case, it's 1. So that means I'm going to go up 1 and down to negative 1. The next thing we want to do is set up our x scale. Now remember, our x scale is going to be the distance between each and every one of our important points. The important points for a cosine is going to be the maximum, intercept, minimum, intercept, back up to maximum. And that keeps on repeating. So I have four x scales within a period. And the distance between x, each x scale is 1 half. So if that's 0, that's 1 half. That's 1. That's 3 halves. And that's 2. OK? Now, again, looking at the parent graph, right? this would be very important for you to understand what is just y of cosine of x. We know that the parent graph, at 0, we start at the maximum. Then at the next x scale, it goes to its intercept, then down to the minimum. Then it goes back to an intercept, and then back up to the maximum point. So now by connecting these, now again, we're graphing cosine. We will actually want to graph secant. So I'm just going to dot dash these. And now I need to kind of continue on. So that's 4 halves. So this would be 5 halves, 3, 7 halves, 8. And now I just kind of continue the pattern. OK, so what I did was I just kept on adding 1 half. And I wanted to do two, uh, two periods. Because when graphing, usually we liked, um, at least in my class, I always uh, ask my students to provide two periods. So now we, now we can get to actually what we're supposed to be graphing is the secant. Now, remember, I said these are reciprocal functions. So on this graph, you can see that where secant is equal to 0, if I take the reciprocal of that, that means I'm going to have 0 in the denominator, which will be 
undefined for secant. So since it's undefined, I'm going to create an asymptote at every single time my cosine graph is equal to 0. OK, so now that I've created my asymptotes, now um, the basic kind of pattern, and you can identify more points by you know, using your table function or graphing it. Um, but the basic form, what you're going to do is, since we have asymptotes, we know that our graph has to approach our asymptotes. And there's actually a point that the cosine and the secant both share. And that point is going to be your maximum and your minimum. So therefore, all I'm simply going to do is take the points from my maximum or my minimum, create that point as part of my secant graph, and then have my two um, then approach each of my asymptotes in this kind of parabola-shaped curve. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. In the blue is your graph for y equals secant of pi x. Thanks.